There's something deeply intimate about the process of reading. I invite you into my head, into a space usually reserved for just me, and let you paint the canvas I provide with your own experience and perceptions. We are co-creating this story, you and I. Love it or hate it, I am honored that you allow me a brief moment to guide your mind and heart. Thank you for this trust. I do not take it lightly. That is a note to the reader from the author, Charlie Pulsifer, in the beginning of this book, The Crystal Bridge, book one of the Lost Shards series, and isn't that just wonderful? I love that idea. I have never thought about reading in quite that light, but it's true, and it makes so much sense, because the author wrote this story, and in his mind, it is a particular story. It has different contexts and meanings to him, but for every single person who reads this story, it's going to be the same words on the page. It's going to be exactly the same book, but every single person who reads it is going to come away with just a slightly different story, a slightly different experience, because it is partly what is already in their mind and partly mostly what is on the page here. And I just, I adored that note. So for that reason alone, I was pretty much sucked right into this book. And yeah, it's just a beautiful concept. And I love that concept of reading. And I'm just going to take that away. And I'm going to put that into every single book that I read from now on. It's just, ooh, it's a beautiful illustration. This book is a science fiction. Now, I like to think that I am a reader of science fiction, but I'm really not. I have figured out just recently that I actually have an aversion to sci-fi. I find it very intimidating. The last sci-fi book I read was probably Ender's Game, and that was maybe a year and a half ago, and that was only because the movie was coming out. I tried to read it when I was younger, and I couldn't get into it because I couldn't understand a lot of it. So I like to say, I like to think that I read sci-fi, and I think it's mostly because it's a genre that I would like to start reading. It's a genre I would like to be a reader of. I just, I can't get into it. I haven't been able to successfully get into this genre for my entire reading life. There are two reasons for this. Number one, too much exposition. I am a dialogue kind of girl. I like action. I like interaction. I like conversation. With a lot of the sci-fi that I have experienced, that I have tried to read, there is usually a lot of description and explanation, and I don't always have the patience for that. In my opinion, there is a right way and a wrong way to do description and explanation. If you want to know more about that, you can check out my video, Engage with Entertaining Description. Number two, tech talk. In school, I hated science. It was my worst class. It was dull, it was dry, and I couldn't understand most of it. I think a lot of my experience with science in school has carried over into my reading of sci-fi. I watch a ton of sci-fi movies. I mean, Stargate SG-1 was one of my favorite television shows. I grew up on that show. I love Stargate Atlantis. I watch Star Trek. I love Star Wars. I, I love sci-fi movies. But I think it's because with a lot of the, the technology, not only is it explained to you, but it's also shown to you. You get to see what its purpose is. You may not understand the science behind it, even if the characters describe it, but you get to see it at work. And so there's context there, and you can understand it. With sci-fi books, that step is missing. I read the explanation, and it doesn't click with anything in my brain. I can't picture it and therefore I can't connect it with the story. With The Crystal Bridge, Pulsifer has managed to keep mostly with the relevant exposition, and that is a great first step. But not only does he just stick with mostly the relevant exposition, but he also makes it entertaining. He makes sure that it's broken up with dialogue and with interaction so we don't get these huge info dumps. He makes sure that it's interesting and he makes sure that it carries the story, and to me, that's what's really important. As far as tech talk, there is a lot of super cool technology in the story, and I'm not going to tell you what it is because that would be kind of a spoiler, and you really just need to read it to find out. It's awesome. What I love about this is that Pulsifer doesn't shy away 
from the technological talk. He doesn't shy away from the big sciencey words, but he he offers enough context clues that the non-geek is going to understand it. But it's not just the context clues. He also makes sure that you see the technology in action as it's being explained. Big surprise, I actually understand Stood it. I mean, there were big words in here that I don't know I would have understood if they had not been properly illustrated. And that is why I think I was so intrigued by not just this book, but particularly the hardcore sci-fi plot of this book. There are several different subplots, and the one that I found the most interesting was the one that was the most hardcore sci-fi, with all of the advanced technology and the big sciencey words, and it makes me realize, apparently, I really do like sci-fi, I just have a hard time finding sci-fi that I can enjoy. The Crystal Bridge is definitely one of those. So all of this sci-fi talk that I would not have normally understood was made perfectly clear. Better yet, it's actually making me interested and intrigued by science. The other day at the library I actually picked up a non-fiction book on science and I am reading it. I have avoided science like the plague ever since I got out of high school because I hated it so much. So thank you, Charlie, because now I am suddenly interested in science! I think the only downside to this book was it did take me a while to get into it. Now, as an explanation, I think this is probably because I read the first chapter three or four times before I could ever get my hands on the actual book. And that's because I am, I actually know the author. I'm in a critique group with Charlie, and so I have critiqued the first chapter of this book three or four times, and so I knew the beginning already. And I think that is the main reason why it did take me so long to get into this book. And it really only took me like 25 pages, which, I mean, when you talk about stories that are hard to get into, sometimes you don't get into them until like page 100. And so with this one it was only, it was chapter four, Brain Spikes, and this was the beginning of, like I said, the hardcore sci-fi element of the story. And I absolutely loved it! So this is a really good mix, I think, of sci-fi and fantasy. It is definitely a sci-fi book. I would never classify this as a fantasy book. But it has certain fantasy qualities. And they don't take away from the sci-fi, but they actually enhance it because of the way that he has used them. The plot is absolutely wonderful. It is convoluted and complicated and incredibly interconnected. And if you know me, you know I love my plots incredibly interconnected, and this does not disappoint. There are like eight different storylines in the story, and that might seem like a lot. But um, it only really concentrates majorly on like three of them, and the rest of them are really more touched on to add to the major storylines. But I am hoping that later on we will learn more about some of these really minor storylines that we only catch glimpses of because I am super intrigued by them and I want to know more about them. Just gonna warn you right now, major cliffhanger. So I give The Crystal Bridge by Charlie Pulsifer five major big shiny stars because I loved this book and it was wonderful and it's awesome and I totally want to read sci-fi again now. I would recommend this for basically anyone who likes a good story. I mean even if you're not a big sci-fi reader I think this would be a great story for you because it's not your typical sci-fi at least as far as I understand sci-fi. It's very engaging, it's very entertaining, and it's pretty easy to understand. You might want to give this one a try because, like me, you might find that you actually like sci-fi. You just need to find the right kind. If you do read the book, I would definitely recommend reading uh, the acknowledgments in back. I have a habit where I always read the acknowledgement pages because I kind of want to know who the author wants to think. Like the family or their editors or their publishers and because I'm just weird that way. But this acknowledgements page, it's actually... <laughs> It feels like a slice out of the life of the author. It's like a, it's like a little mini biography. It's really entertaining. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's fun, so I recommend reading it. The one other thing that I want to point out about this book is the cover. Um, I fell in love with the cover as soon as I got my hands on this. Uh, it's just, it's gorgeous. Uh, this is an independently published book. So I, I always look at the covers of independently published books because sometimes they're not all that great. And I'm very picky about my covers because I really do judge books by their cover. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Uh, this cover is just gorgeous. And what I absolutely love about it is that it looks kind of abstract. And you're not really sure what's going on with it, but it looks really cool, right? 
as you read the story, as you go chapter by chapter, little bits and pieces of this artwork suddenly make sense. And by the end of the book, you're just like, oh my gosh, this, this cover tells like the entire story of the book and you didn't even realize it. And so I really do love that about this cover. Oh, it's beautiful artwork. Yeah, so definitely I would say get your hands on this book. All right, I will see you guys next week.